Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we continue with part two of our two-part series on the impact of COVID-19 on routine immunizations. I'm joined today by Dr. Sandra Freihofer, an internal medicine physician, adjunct associate professor of medicine at Emory University School of Medicine, and an AMA trustee in Atlanta. Dr. Freihofer is the AMA liaison to the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Dr. L.J. Tan, Chief Strategy Officer of the Immunization, Immunization Action Coalition in Chicago. He also co-founded and co-chairs the National Adult and Influenza Immunization Summit. And Dr. Jim Campbell, Professor of Pediatrics and an Infectious Disease Specialist with the University of Maryland Medical Center in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Dr. Tan, you talked about measles. Uh, mm -hmm. What about other important vaccinations, uh, such as the flu? Yeah. What do physicians I, I think, need to know yeah, about this for the, for the coming fall? I think uh, that's a great question. I think, you know, what we're going to end up seeing this fall for flu vaccine is a major push to try to take flu off the table. So why do we want to take flu off the table, right? I mean, if you think about COVID-19 and the fact that we're likely going to have a resurgence of COVID-19 disease, um, you know, and you think about the symptoms of COVID-19 versus the symptoms of flu, there's a lot of overlap. And if you think about the populations that are vulnerable to COVID-19, also, there's also a lot of overlap with the flu population that are vulnerable to flu. And so I think what we really want to do is take flu off the table as much as we can this fall. So what do we mean by that? Take it off the table in terms of the healthcare systems. When we have our resurgence of COVID-19 disease, we do not want to be also having to deal with influenza at the same time. So the more people we can get vaccinated and protected and get them out of that system, wonderful, right? And then obviously with the overlap of populations and symptoms in terms of the two diseases, if we can have people vaccinated, that's one less diagnostic criteria that we can look at uh, as, as people come in with respiratory illness, right? So, so getting flu off the table this fall is a high priority um, for, for not just the summit that I co-chair, but also for the CDC. And the CDC will be launching uh, some initiatives this fall to help the public understand even as COVID-19 disease resurges, even as the epidemic, the pandemic continues, getting protected against flu, for example, this fall will be very important. And I would argue not just flu. I mean, anything that we can do to take diseases off the table so that people aren't going to the healthcare system would be fantastic. So pneumococcal vaccine, shingles vaccine, you know, all those things are things that we need to be looking for in the fall to take it off the table. So I think that's a great point. Thank you so much there, Todd. Well, last year we talked a little bit about uh, COVID-19 and the vaccine and development. What are you hearing and what do you think the timing is uh, for a COVID-19 vaccine? I'm happy to jump in first and uh, just mention, I'm happy to send this, this link to everybody, the, uh, the summit that I co-chair with the CDC and with the uh, Office of Infectious Disease Policy at, the, at ADHS. We held a meeting on May 12th. Uh, we were specifically on COVID-19 vaccine development, and we had six of the innovators representing five different vaccine platforms uh, present on their on their stage their clinical trials that are ongoing right now. And so, I think with that in the background, um, what I can say is that I'm fairly confident with the number of irons we have in the fire, um, something will strike. Uh, and if everything goes well, I think we can be entering phase three trials probably at the end of this year, if everything goes well. And with the way manufacturers have committed to, uh, to repurposing their, their capacity, their facilities towards a COVID-19 vaccine, if everything goes well, I think we can see potentially 100, 200 million doses of a COVID-19 vaccine in the spring uh, of 2021. That again, subject to everything going well, subject to obviously FDA regulatory approval, in this case under an emergency use authorization. But I, 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 after having heard some of our innovators, I'm a little more optimistic than I was earlier. Um, so I, I'll speak to that part. And I think, you know, obviously I, I leave it to, to, to Dr. Campbell, Dr. Firehover, because I think there are also going to be concerns about, you know, when we rush a vaccine, quote unquote, uh, what does that mean, right? Yeah, I, maybe I could jump in next. Thanks, Dr. Tan. Um, we are involved in some of those vaccine trials and in developing um, next phase trials. And particularly, what do we do as we gather more and more information on the safety, immune response, and efficacy in adults 
when's the right time to trigger that we start moving down into mm -hmm. children, into the elderly, into those who are at high risk. So we're involved in trying to, to make the, help people to make those decisions. I am also very optimistic, especially because so many people have turned their attention to this and are using every type of platform, as we say, meaning various scientific approaches to vaccines, some of which have never had li a licensed, uh, uh, that platform has not had a licensed vaccine before. But in terms of safety, um, that of course is the number one thing when you're talking about vaccines, because they don't go to typically to a small group of people, they go to large populations, sometimes the entire population. So the bar for safety is very, you know, we have to keep that very high. Um, and so, uh, you know, we need to move quickly and at the same time not cut corners. And there are ways of doing that, and that is when everyone's on board. The manufacturers, mm -hmm. the investigators, the regulators, everyone is thinking the same way. Because many of the delays, not delays, but the longer time that it takes to move things through um, is, is because there's just processes. And if you do the same work, but in a shorter amount of time, you can still show all the important things about safety. So, Absolutely. you know, that's the way I feel is no cutting corners, but just move a lot faster and work late into the night. <laughs> Absolutely. Dr. Fryhofer, any thoughts on that? Well, I think it's great to hear that update as how we're coming along with this COVID vaccine, but there's several months between before that will happen. As Dr. Tan and Dr. Campbell alluded to, many experts do predict a second surge of COVID in the fall, right as flu season begins. And so that's another reason why flu vaccination, especially this year, is so important. And a reminder, everyone six months and older needs flu vaccination every year, including this year. Now, we all know that many routine visits are going virtual. And although we can do a lot in a telehealth visit, immunization still requires an in-person encounter. But during these telehealth visits, there's much we can do. We can reinforce the importance of vaccination and review which vaccinations a patient's needs and come up with a plan. Be creative, be efficient, and remember that physician recommendation is a great motivator for vaccination. Um, you can administer vaccination during an in-person visit for another reason. You can give more than one vaccination at a time. Uh, Dr. Tan mentioned the many vaccines that some patients may need. I think we will expect more drive-through flu vaccination clinics in the fall. And remind your patients to dress appropriately for the, the occasion. If they wear a sleeveless shirt, it's going to be much easier to administer that vaccine. That is great advice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that completes our two-part series on immunizations and COVID-19. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fryhofer, Dr. Campbell, and Dr. Tan for being here today and sharing your perspectives. Uh, if you missed part one, you can find it on the AMA's YouTube channel. We'll be back tomorrow with another COVID-19 update. For updated resources on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us and take care.